Hello there, it's Boots Owen here. This is a Bristan Glee electric shower. I'm gonna tear it apart today and just make a video of that. Of that. So stick with me if that's what you're after. There's a plate on the bottom there, Glee GL85W, eight and a half kilowatts. Now let's get it off. I've got the screws out, so the front just lifts off and the cable's already disconnected for that circuit board. And so the circuit board there has a little display through the plastic, you can see the little wobble on the plastic there. I think it displays temperature, but I'm not sure. I don't know. So it's got a little toggle switch there, I think. Let's get into that and see what's in here first. So here's the circuit board. Hold on with sellotape by the looks of things there. And there's the switch. Yeah, it's a kind of a toggle switch there. Not a momentary switch or anything, like a light switch, you know? Small cables on it, so it's probably carrying a low, well, it might not be carrying a low voltage, it could still be 220. There's connectors there for something else as well, I don't know, and there's your numbers there. Your display. So, there's some kind of a brain in there, some kind of a chip, might not be a brain, let's see what sort of chip it is actually. An f 923411113 b 737 a little chip, it has no, no name on it other than China. That's Interesting, and it's all surface mount, except for the resist, no, they're diodes, I think, and a uh, little folded over capacitor. Yeah, okay. So there's the button, back of the button, back of the knobs, there's little O-rings on those knobs. I'll keep them, they might come in handy. And the rest of that can go. It's all just plastics, really. They're all just chromed plastic. So into the meat of it, here's the shower. Now, interesting, okay, power comes in, let's get it up like that, water comes in down here, it's got a push fit connector, plastic, goes over here, and it's got a left and right fitting, I guess, so you can do it up from the bottom here, up from the bottom over here, or down from the top over there, right over to this side, so at any point, so it's kind of more universal fitting. Uh, let's start taking screws out. All of these screws look to be stainless steel, which... You'd think they would always be in electric showers, but I've taken some apart and the screws are all rusty. So they couldn't be. Couldn't be uh, stainless if they're all rusty. So we've got an earth block there, which seems to have a little... Um, well, it looks like a temperature probe, actually, in there in the inlet water. That's interesting. I've not seen that before. No, that's the outlet water. Of course it is. Um, the inlet water's over here. I just said that. This one has a, has a kind of a rubber seal the whole way around, which is not typical of electric showers. Some of them just have like a, almost like a dust cover. So the water, if it gets in, it, it won't, it, it can't really get in, but they're not sealed. So it's more of like a it's shower proof rather than waterproof if you were to immerse them. And I guess this is the same, if you were to immerse this, water could still come in there and the seal only runs as far as the bottom. Maybe the other ones do have seals, I don't remember seeing them though. Okay, so let's start taking this apart. We've got a, what looks like a little blow off valve there, in case there's too much pressure, I guess. Don't know, oh, I need another screw in here. Right, so it's earthed and it's a temperature probe that is earthed by the looks of things. There's another soft tapping screw, holding that earth lead on. Let's get that out, a little bit of brass as a bracket and then the probe has an o-ring on it that might be a handy thing to keep if uh, if you've got a multimeter sometimes you can measure temperature with a multimeter i guess it depends on the type of multimeter however so let's get this out so that's the outlet it's just held in with a probably stainless steel clip nothing fancy there just a piece of bent metal and it should have an o-ring somewhere the o-ring's inside there there it is, with a bit of crust on it. I don't know what that's from. Okay, then this clip for the bracket that holds the inlet on. So you can see the inlet here. So the inlet here can swivel across left and right, and it can also swivel, so like straight out of the wall or up from below, and the same left and right, except from it comes down as well. It can come down on the other side as well. Again, it's just a push fit connector there, nothing to it. And then another clip there, holding that on. There's a little, it's just basically a T-piece with a strainer, okay. It's interesting, there's a little strainer in there. 
guess that could become blocked in service. Can't get it out by pulling, so I wonder does it screw out? I don't think it does. Oh, it does seem to screw out. Interesting. Well, it has an O-ring as well. So there's a little strainer. I bet you they cost a fortune if you can if you can't get them. Right. Um, let's pull these cables off here. So it's the live and the neutral going to a solenoid valve here. And it just pops out, and so that lets water in. And there's a flow regulator. So that's for pressure up on top, pressure into this switch here. So there's a diaphragm in here, I'd say. Yeah, there's a diaphragm in there. It pushes out, and you need that on to hit a micro switch there. And I'll just hold on with one more screw. So there's a diaphragm of that uh, pressure valve. I wonder if I blow on it. You can see it rise up. It's out of focus, but there it is. This is the flow regulator here. Very stiff and solenoid all in one. So the solenoid water comes in through the solenoid into this flow regulator. Uh, pressure through a little tiny hole in the bottom there by the looks of things and then water coming out and you can see the green of the flow regulator in there. I'm guessing that, yeah, you can see it. It just comes up and down. It's just a type of a faucet, but I guess it's never got full off. Okay, so then the power cable's coming in through a connector block. Nothing fancy about that, it's just a big high amp connector block. And this switch here, let's take a look at that. This has a load of micro switches on it. Two more here, so it's got micro switches to the board. I think this is the pressure one. Okay, so we're nearly there now. So micro switches, so there's a micro switch in here, three micro switches in here. So typically these are high and low elements and this is a pressure switch. A neat little micro switch, oop, I lost the screw. A neat little micro switch there and then two regular ones here and here. And there's a cam somewhere. There it is. So this thing turns a cam. If I get it all together properly. And depending on where the cam is, it turns on and off a switch. There it is. One or both or none. So we're nearly there now. Um, here's the circuit board. Let's unclip this. Here's the circuit board and this one. So there's a communications cable running to the other circuit board. Somewhere. Yeah, through one of those. So you've got communications to the front. You've got a transformer there, so there's probably a lower voltage in here. It doesn't say. It's very. It's kind of a crude circuit board. Um, they're not used, whatever those blocks are for. There's a thing there for a relay. So it might be, yeah, look, a relay to join what must be live and live, I'd say. So there's a potential here that this has a big, a big, a big relay switch driving um, like a remote control, which I've seen on uh, Myra's or Triton's or something. 10 volt AC output on that. So that's probably the lower voltage for the front. And then in here, What I expect is there's just a couple of coils in it, like every other shower element that I've seen. The coils are just electric kettle elements, water heater elements. That thing off the top is a thermal switch or a thermal fuse. Um, I think they're resettable, but they're not automatic resetting. So if your shower boiler overheats, that clicks and then the power is cut between the live in. And you've got to, to reset it, you've got to get in there and go click. To reset it and here's the boiler and this one's just clipped on so we might be able to pop this off yeah we'll just pop this one off i guess they're stainless i've not seen one that's as easy to open as this but that's kind of good because it means in theory the parts are replaceable and then in here that's the blow-off valve wonder we'll be able to see how that works so before we open the element up let's have a look in here it's a little rubber diaphragm it's got a bit of sediment on it and what happens is, if there's too much pressure in this tank, if the outlet gets blocked and it overheats and then the water starts to expand, 
this little diaphragm will just go pop and blow out. And that's all that that is. It's just like pop sideways and then to reset it you have to open it up and redo it manually. Now let's see if we can open this. Yeah, it's not hard at all actually. I kind of like that design. There's a copper pipe in there as well, so let's pull that out so I can recycle that. It's not very big. So the idea is that the water comes in at the bottom. Over here, I think it was. That's the pressure release valve over there. And this is where the water comes out through this pipe. So the water has to come in, pass up through the coils or around the coils and then down through this pipe here. So that's copper and that can be recycled as some kind of copper depending on your recycling center so that's just wire and you can recycle that but what i was looking for was this little thing here so let's cut that apart a little temperature probe i might play with that later with a multimeter and just see what it does off camera for my own for my own fun there it is no numbers or anything on it but i'm guessing i'll just play with that in my own time and see how it works but i'm guessing that gives a change in resistance depending on temperature or something like that so i'll cut off those other links I'll save that and then I'll tidy up these wires, chop the ends off, but that's it for this one. Briston Glee, was it? Yeah, Briston Glee, eight and a half kilowatts. I hope you enjoyed that. Any questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. See you later.